Is there a business model with both economic and environmental benefits? One where consumers can also save money? Welcome to the circular economy. Circular economy means moving away from taking materials from the earth, turning them into products, and eventually throwing them away as waste. Instead, products are repaired, reused, and recycled. The circular economy considers the entire cycle of products, from the extraction of raw materials that are becoming increasingly scarce, through to design, production, and distribution. Designers strive to make products durable, and when the products reach the end of their life, their materials are ideally recycled to keep everything in a closed loop. There are also new business opportunities for repair services and leasing, and for sharing platforms too. Computers, cars, furniture. A manufacturer in the canton of Vaux even rents out beds and mattresses to hotels. The hotels only pay if the mattresses are used, which built-in sensors and chips register daily. The chips also continuously monitor the condition of the mattresses, flagging them for maintenance in order to reduce unnecessary material losses. As a country with few raw materials, Switzerland has been pursuing circular economy approaches since the mid-1980s and has succeeded in closing some loops. For example, more than half of the country's municipal waste is separated, collected and recycled. However, the high recycling rate stands alongside a huge volume of waste. On average, each person living in Switzerland throws away over 700 kilos of waste per year. So a lot still needs to be done. Herr Schmidlin, I have da so a Kunststoffflasche. Was is this eigentlich for a material? Kreislaufwirtschaft is ganz wichtig im Bereich von Produkte Design. Produkte Design heißt, dass ein Produkt so hergestellt wird, dass es möglichst dann eine lange Lebensdauer hat und während der Lebensdauer auch repariert werden kann oder weniger Energie verbraucht. Rohstoffpreise werden teurer, die Inflation steigt und es ist wichtig, dass wir in Kreislaufwirtschaft einen Schritt vorwärts kommen. In March 2022, the Swiss Federal Council issued a report pointing out industries where circular economy approaches should be prioritized. Let's take a closer look at some of them. The report suggests that whenever possible, existing buildings should be renovated rather than replaced. This includes thermal and sound insulation. When new buildings are needed, construction companies could use existing components and recycled materials. Traditional concrete production uses a lot of energy and its emissions are high. Switzerland is a front runner when it comes to recycling concrete. Out of 17 million tons of demolition materials produced every year, including concrete, gravel, sand, tarmac and masonry, around 70% is recycled. Zement wird hergestellt in einem sehr energieintensiven Prozess. Sie haben eine Flammentemperatur von rund 2000 Grad und dafür brauchen sie sehr viel Energie und die Brennenergie wurde ursprünglich aus primär fossilen Brennstoffen wie zum Beispiel Kohle gewonnen und heute ist das in der Schweiz nur noch 30 Prozent, 70 Prozent der Brennenergie kommt aus Abfallbrennstoffen. Wir könnten von heute 70 auf rund 100 Prozent gehen und, und unsere Brennenergie aus Abfallbrennstoffen noch mehr nutzen. Swiss agriculture could also be more resource efficient. Again, it's about producing as little waste as possible and feeding everything back into the system. Instead of importing and transporting feed for animals and fertilizers for crops, everything should be produced at the same site. For example, cattle manure can be used to fertilize the forage crops. Dung and compost are also a good basis for worms as feed for chickens. Bran, a byproduct of the grain mill, or okara from tofu production, can also be turned into cattle feed. Whey, a byproduct of cheese production, is rich in proteins and can be used to feed pigs or as an ingredient in protein shakes for bodybuilders. Every business can find its own loops, like this company that raises shrimp in 30-degree warm water in Switzerland. 
unsere Schrimps Farm steht jetzt neben einer Saline, die produziert Salz, hat Abwärme aus dem Industriebetrieb und wir können diese Abwärme nutzen für unsere Schrimps, für eben das, das Aufwärmen des Wassers und geben kühler das Wasser zurück. Wir haben uns gegen eine Styroporlösung entschieden, um die Schrimps an Private zu versenden. Und unsere frische Box ist aus einem anderen Material. Die kann man dann 200 Mal wiederverwenden. Die Exkremente der Schrimps und Futterreste gelangen in eine Wasseraufbereitung. Und das ist eine Kreislaufanlage. Das heißt, wir haben einmal initial das System gefüllt mit Wasser und wir füllen nur noch ein bisschen Wasser nach, dass eben der Verlust durch die Verdunstung kompensiert werden kann. What does it take to turn old paint, varnishes and solvents into new usable raw materials? The processes are often complex and expensive. However, the right incentives could lead to products that are easier to recycle. In chemistry, it takes several steps to produce a desired substance. Most of the time, materials are left over. These could be exchanged between manufacturing companies and used to make other products. Biotechnologies also hold great potential. Bacteria, fungi and algae can generate complex compounds that the chemical industry would need a lot of auxiliary materials and energy to produce. Classic biotechnological applications were developed thousands of years ago with the production of wine and beer using yeast. Then there's the processing of milk into various foods using certain microorganisms or enzymes. Today, it's possible to use similar processes for all sorts of chemical compounds, compounds for plastics, fuels, or biological pesticides. Pharmaceutical companies also make use of biotechnology to produce ingredients for antibiotics, hormones, or vitamins. So there are a lot of ideas on the table for the circular economy. But the Federal Council report outlines several barriers to innovation. The construction, food and chemical industries are heavily regulated. The interplay of regulations at the federal, cantonal and municipal levels often hinders businesses from making significant changes. For SMEs in particular, it's difficult to get an overview of the various regulations. Another hurdle is the lack of incentives for businesses. Sales prices often don't cover the environmental cost of production, such as water pollution or CO2 emissions. Plus, adapting existing factories and processes to the circular economy costs them a lot of money. Taxes on CO2 and other emissions could incentivize businesses to invest more in circular economy approaches. However, in June 2021, Swiss voters rejected a law which would have increased taxes on heating oil and gas and introduced emission taxes for plane tickets. The list goes on. But it seems obvious that it takes effort from all players to make a circular economy happen. Wir haben nur eine Erde und wir haben die planetaren Belastbarkeitsgrenzen bereits zum Teil überschritten. Wir müssen wegkommen von der linearen Wirtschaft, das heißt produzieren, brauchen und dann wegwerfen zu einer Kreislaufwirtschaft. 